Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. Hey guys, John here with TLD. Hope you guys are doing well. I am back with some 4K content. Now initially, when the Mac Pro came out, I really wanted, not necessarily needed, but wanted a 4K display to go alongside it simply because I had fallen in love with higher resolution gadgets, whether it's a smartphone, tablet, or laptop, the more pixels there are, the more I seem to enjoy it. Now the problem with the Mac Pro and a 4K display is one, prices were and obviously still are crazy expensive, and two, there really wasn't and still isn't officially support out of the box, but the upcoming 10.9.3 version of Mavericks completely changes that. Now before I jump into the fine details of the video, let me backtrack a couple weeks back I actually found the ASUS PQ321Q 4K display on an open box discount for around 2200 bucks on Newegg, which obviously is still expensive, but was about 1300 bucks off the actual selling price when the monitor initially came out. With that said, even with knowing there really wasn't a whole lot of support for 4K displays because the discount was so big, I really couldn't pass it up, so I picked one up so I could try it out for myself. So I got it in, was super excited, got everything set up, got it running at 60 hertz, and after about 30 minutes to an hour, I had it packed up and ready to go back. So by now, I'm sure you're asking why. Why would you return it if you loved higher resolution displays? And what I want you to do now is actually make sure you are watching this video full screen. So go ahead and take a second, click the full screen, and make sure you're doing that. And this is what it looks like running at the native 3840 by 2160. Now don't get me wrong, high resolution pictures and obviously 4K video look amazing on the 4K display and being able to have a full 1080p video window inside the actual display maxed out with tons more real estate is awesome. But if you're looking at any kind of text or UI elements, it is just simply way too small. You essentially have to have your face glued up close to the screen, way closer than you should be to make out the text and it really just wasn't a good experience. So I had everything packed up, I had the RMA ready to go, but I got busy and kind of lagged it on the return and sure and behold, a couple weeks later, Apple seeded out the 10.9.3 version of Mavericks, which of course includes support for 4K displays. So what I mean by that, if anybody has used a Retina MacBook Pro, you know that even though it has a super high resolution display, it actually takes that real estate and scales it down into a usable area that's super dense and super pixel filled. So hopefully you're still watching in full screen mode. And now in addition to the native 3840 by 2160, there are four additional modes. So first up is 3200 by 1800. And the crazy thing is, is it actually renders the entire image at 6400 by 3600 and then scales it down to fit into the 4K display. Now obviously you cannot see that screenshot to the full potential in this video, but I will have an uncompressed full resolution screenshot linked down below just in case anyone is interested in checking that out. Next up is a 2560 by 1440 mode. So this actually renders the entire image at 5120 by 2880. And how it works is the text and UI elements are actually drawn in at four times the size two each way. So essentially you gotta visualize it as there are four pixels crammed into one pixel of real estate. Now the cool thing however, is with applications that support this for video and photo, that's actually drawn in at one time. So you actually get the full resolution. So like I talked about, you could have a full 1080p window plane maxed out at full resolution and still have a ton more real estate to work with. Now there's also 1080p and 720p scaling modes. You can actually hack a uh, 1080p high DPI mode before this came out, but I really wasn't a fan of that. Something about a 1080p scale on a massive 32 inch screen just does not look good at all. And obviously 720p is gonna be even worse. Now between the 1800p and 1440p modes, for actually doing work, I really, really enjoyed that 3200 by 1800 real estate. There was a lot of room, it wasn't as small as full native resolution, but you could still get a lot done. Now as far as the 1440p mode, I think most users would end up liking this the best simply because text and UI elements are most enjoyable. It's nice and big, nice and crisp, and you don't have to sit super close to your screen to read anything. So hopefully now you have a little better idea of how it works, and if you are looking to pick up a 4K display in the future for your Mac Pro, you can rest easy because there is solid support coming very soon. Now myself, I'm a little torn because even with this, it still may be a month or two away before the official release comes out. And even though I really, really, really enjoy the high DPI scaling modes on this, I don't know if the added real estate is really gonna increase my productivity as far as the price to productivity goes. 
Now, another reason I'm leaning towards returning the ASUS monitor is because with this support, it also gives us a hint and hope that Apple should release a 4K Thunderbolt display very soon. And one of the reasons I am a huge fan of the Thunderbolt display is the fact that it acts as a giant hub. So in addition to being a beautiful monitor, it also gives you extra Thunderbolt ports, USB ports, and acts, like I said, as a hub for your Mac Pro. As many of you guys may have seen with my setup video, I have the Universal Audio Apollo Twin set up via Thunderbolt into the Thunderbolt display. It's a nice, clean, quick access to it. And with the ASUS monitor, it kind of hinders my setup a little bit. So that's one of the reasons I am looking forward to an updated Thunderbolt display with obviously 4K support. Aside from that, if you guys enjoyed the video, you found it helpful, or you're just feeling like being awesome, make sure to hit that like button. It is much appreciated. And real quick before I hop out of here, I wanna give a huge shout out to Squarespace for helping support the channel. Now, for those of you guys who aren't aware, Squarespace is one of the quickest and easiest ways to set up your own website. It's super easy to navigate. It's got a drag and drop interface and is optimized to look good Good automatically so if you're on your desktop your laptop your smartphone it is gonna look good they have an awesome 24 7 support team based out of New York City and pricing starts out at just eight dollars a month with a free domain if you sign up for a year so I know a lot of you have channels here on YouTube and if you've been looking to create a complimentary website to go along with that this is the perfect way to do that on top of that they were kind enough to hook you guys up with a free trial no credit card required and if you decide you like it and you want to keep using it you get 10% off your entire order by using the offer code TLD at checkout Again, thank you guys very much for watching. If you guys have any questions on the Mac Pro 4K displays or tech in general, hit me up with a question down below. I do try to reply to as many YouTube comments as possible, but it does get a little bit hectic sometimes. So the absolute best way to get a hold of me is on Twitter at TLD today. I am on there all the time and you will more than likely get a response. Also, let me know what I should do with the 4K display. Should I return the ASUS monitor and wait for Apple to hopefully come out with one of their own soon? Or should I keep it and cross my fingers that they roll out the 10.9.3 update very soon? Again, this is Jonathan with TLD. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you guys later.